If you're new to JavaScript or frameworks in general, you might have heard that it's really bad using inline event handlers. But why is that? It's because of separation of concerns, because it's easier to have our markup styles and logic separate, so it's easier to change and maintain. But this is different using modern JavaScript frameworks, because all our concerns are in one place, using components which we're going to learn about later, and writing declarative code, so the framework is doing the heavy DOM lifting and under the hood performance optimization. So if you want to know about Svelte events, you won't find them in the Svelte documentation because it's just JavaScript, so you have to go to MDN. For example, in the event reference, if you're curious about double click, we can find it, it's under the generic element. For example, if you care about mouse move, we can see it's under the same generic element. You can see a lot of other events that are available to you. So let's look at an event listener example in JavaScript. So in CodePen, we can create a style tag, just like in regular HTML. You can say HTML body, and we have to create these styles because we're not using any reset. Let's say margin zero, our div is going to inherit the height. We're going to create a div with an ID of app, and then we're going to create a script tag. So we're going to get our app element using document query selector app. Then we're going to add our mouse object that's going to hold our coordinates, x being zero and y being zero. So let's create a function that's going to update those values when we move the mouse. So function handle mouse move. We're going to take an event. I'm going to show you in a second where the event comes from. So we're going to say mouse x equals from the event and the client x that's inside the window. And we're going to say mouse y event client y. And of course, we need to update the UI. And if you scroll down, we can see this is our update UI function. So you can say function update UI, target the app element and change this in our HTML. Using template literals, we can say the mouse position is mouse x and mouse y. And then we just need to say app element add event listener mouse move. Then we're going to use our handle mouse move. When we do a function like this, the event gets passed automatically, but if you use an inline function, an anonymous function like this, then we would have to say event, and then we would have to pass the event ourselves. But we don't have to in this case, so that's where the event comes from. So this should work right now. The coordinates should be shown. And fair enough, it's working. Okay, so great. So in Svelte, we can use directives, and one of those directives is the on directive. So we can go to the Svelte REPL, we can create a script tag. We can do the same thing. We can say mouse and then we can define the coordinates. We can create the same function, handle mouse move event. And this part is literally the same. Event client y. Now we can use the directive. So we can say say the mouse position is mouse x x mouse y you can use the on mouse move directive and you can say handle mouse move we can add the styles the swift repl already has some presets defined so we just have to say height 100% and it should work just like our previous example. And Svelte also has some special modifiers for DOM events such as prevent default. And you can find a complete list under the element directives that we looked at a minute ago. And you can chain the special modifiers together. So if you look at this example, we have a script, it has a function handle submit. It says console log submit. And then you usually have a form, 
some input say type text and a button let's submit and I think by default it is submit but let's just be specific and let's say type submit so usually what happens when you submit a form, the page is going to reload and we usually want JavaScript to do that when we're doing single page applications. So we can say on submit, paren default, we can say handle submit. So anything we enter here and submit is going to be handled. And you should see submit. So submit and we get submit here. So in other frameworks or even Svelte, you can do it the old way where you just say on submit and you give it, for example, this handle submit function that gets the event passed like we just learned. So you would have event and then you would have to say event prevent default. So that's a really nice shorthand and one of many things Svelte makes so much easier.